Hi designers, I want to present to you a different method for starting your HTML document based on our textbook. Something that they really emphasize in the art wireframes. And I think that for some of us, starting with the wireframe, the structural elements only of the HTML is going to really help us. Right now I have up the wireframe for chapter four Pacific Trails case study. Notice that it contains a header, navigation, the main area, and then it even has inside the main area, a contact ID, and then finally a footer. I can tell that each of these are separate sections because of the disconnect between them. You can see that on uh, figure 4.26. Now we're gonna start inside the body because remember everything within our wireframe actually goes within the viewable area the body so let's start with header now because we are using atom we have this very special feature where we don't even have to use our tags unless we really want to but if we use our tags we're in danger of not closing our tags so it's highly advisable that you go ahead and use the autocomplete, in this case, header. I start typing in head and I see, okay, I have head. No, that's the thing that tells the browser what to do. Um, I need header. So I'm going to uh, take my cursor, arrow down on my keyboard and then press tab and boom, I have the header opened and closed and I don't have to worry about it. Before we move on, let me show you something. If I go back up to the header tag, notice when I hover over it or I have my cursor on top of it, it is underlined blue and the body tag is underlined blue. So when an element is opened and closed properly, it is underlined blue. The next element is the navigation. Just start typing nav, boom, done. Now I'm going to put some notes here that reminds me that the navigation element is going to be on every single page. All right, so the other part is that the headers element is also used on all pages. These are kind of like the template of your site. So I'm going to um, put another comment in so after the navigation, um, you can see from our wireframe that it's going to come the main content. Let's go ahead and start typing main. There it is. Tab to open and close the tags. Now I can see now there's actually another area inside main. So there's another element inside the main element and it says contact ID. Now that's actually a divider and divider is D. I V start typing that tab boom it's not going to have a class it's going to have an id so let's get rid of that and just put id equals or a tab right when i pull up id it's going to give me equal sign and double parentheses or double quotation marks and then i could just say contact so that id is going to be linked to the style sheet so that if I have an ID contact and I style it a certain way, it's going to be styled, the divider is going to be styled based on the CSS attached to the contact. All right, so that finishes up my main content. I'm just going to put some comments in here. And I'll say that it contains the contact information for my site. And that's the divider, the div. Moving on, the last element on this before the body ends is the footer. And this also is going to be on every single page. So I'm just gonna put a comment in here. The final piece of my wireframe is the footer. So I'll just start typing in foot, then tab, boom opening, closing, footer, tags. Most of the time I'm going to be changing content in the main element. 
Now that completes our structuring of the actual um, body of our HTML page. And so we can now move into um, the actual tasks that are ahead of us. So we probably got a little bit ahead um, in chapter four, but let's get to it. So I have my folder already copied um, and I have index.html and garrett.html. Since I started over with the uh, wireframe, I just had to copy and paste all the uh, information into there. If you want to start over from scratch, that's what you're going to want to do. And now I am creating a new file uh, from task two on page 139. It says I created an external style sheet named Pacific.css. So CSS cascading style sheets has a different uh, a different code. And so it's going to look differently. It even has different comments. And so let me start by putting my heading that I need to have on all HTML and CSS documents. In CSS, it's forward slash star to make um, a comment. And then I end it with a star forward slash. All right, so task two tells us to set global styles using the body element selector. Anytime we are going to use global styles, that means body because that's what we see. Okay, then I'm going to start typing body. It knows this is what I want. That's the element. And now I'm going to use curly braces within CSS. And once I type one, notice that it automatically types the second one. So don't close that tag, but I am gonna give myself some space here. I prefer having each property and value on one line. So each property and value are gonna have its very own line between the opening and closing tags of the body. So as I start typing in, just like I had with HTML, I get a list. This time I get a list of all P. Notice how each one of these has a P next to it. That's a list of properties that are possible in CSS. So I'm gonna use the one for background color. And there we go, I press tab, boom, it puts the colon, everything I need. And notice, um, now it, it tells us in the task two, um, we have background color white, and often it's very intuitive, the property is, and then sometimes it's not, like text color coming up. So I could type white technically, but they want us to do the hexadecimal, which is has, hashtag FFF, FFF. And I could also inherit. That's like the standard value. There could be a ton of values though. That's why it only says inherit, which means that whatever was um, in, whatever was declared earlier in the document, that's what's going to stay there. Um, and then also, I want to note that, um, no, I don't want to note anything. So let's just type in. So notice, remember, once I type in my hexadecimal code, so the value in CSS, there always has to be a semicolon after the value. Moving on to the next element, text is just color, which is strange because you would think it might be like, you know, text color, but it's not, it's just color. Let's go ahead and put in the hexadecimal for that. Dark gray is definitely more accessible. I personally wouldn't choose 666666. However, I would choose 56, 56, 56. We'll just do what uh, this author wants. Now, I am gonna highlight this and I'm going to select the whole property um, that, that uh, the style that I've done for the body element. 
And I'm just going to copy it and paste it because I'm going to do the same styling for the navigation element, the heading two element, and the description um, element. Okay, so really, I'm just going to be changing um, what's inside. And in this, in our very entry level, it's just changing background color and text color, background color and text color. So that's going to be really easy. Let's go. Paste it in. I'm going to change the background color. Change the text color back to white. And I notice with the blue that my tags are open and closed. There we go. Let's change this to, all right, this is the header element. Moving on. We'll just copy that again. Paste it for the navigation element. And we're just going to change it based on what it's telling us. It says configure sky blue background color. This time we don't need the color of the text, so I can get rid of that property and value. There we go. Moving on. Next is the heading to element. The next element that we're going to do is the H2. I'm just going to copy the navigation element, give myself some space, change the selector to H2, and it tells me that I just need a text color. So I'm going to go in and change the text color. Let's copy this one again. Copy this again, or we'll just copy the navigation since the D2 just needs the background color. Oh, it's just the color text. My bad. There we go. Dark blue text color. Change that. And of course, change the selector. My method of copying and pasting can definitely make you forget to change the selector. So be super aware of that as you use that shortcut. Okay, so the next part of the project says that we need to add a class. So a class is dot resort. Now, remember when we made um, the contact ID uh, divider? Well, remember a contact ID is unique to the page where resort, um, so some people call this the hook, a hook and it means that, you know how in a song, like a hook is repeated um, throughout the song? So that's what that means is resort can be repeated throughout the pages, you know, on different elements. All right. So the resort says that we need to configure the 19762. So we already have that up here. So I'm just going to copy this from H2, copy that, paste it down here. All right, so let's save this guy. Um, but actually, you know what? Oh, wait. I don't like the way this is formatted right now. Uh, I am going to use my Beautify packages. Adam, Beautify, Beautify. And it's going to make everything um, all uh, in one line. This is better for me. So the other thing that I like to do is um, classes and IDs. Um, I like to separate. So everything that's like a global style. Okay. These are all global styles. I'm going to put that down here. Okay. Um, global styles. Okay. This just helps. I mean, even though I can tell because it's red, well, if I'm not in a, you know, uh, an official text editor for coding, then it's not going to be red. And so it's just going to help me to have some documentation as I go and uh, to organize. I don't want to have like 
a random resort up in the top and then um, all of that good stuff. Okay, so moving on. The next task that they want us to do is actually go into a validator. Well, first, I'm going to save it again. And then it says they want us to go into a validator. So let me open up my browser real quick. It says go to Jigsaw. Uh, let's see, jigsaww3.org forward slash CSS dash validator. Let's see. Okay. So I want to do it by uh, direct import and I'm going to paste in here. So I, um, I copied, I pasted. So notice here, this doesn't have the color schemes. Check it. Look at that. It says this document validates. It's perfect. Okay. So I don't have any issues. Perfect. Okay. Moving on. Then now I can go to task three, which talks about the home page. Now remember the home page is the index.html. I gotta link this. I haven't even linked it. I can't even see it yet. At first, let me save this again. All right, so let's go ahead and link this up. Now, a link to the style sheet is something that we're talking to the browser about. So it goes in the head section. I am going to put it right above the title. And I'm just going to start typing link. And look, Adam knows what I want. Press tab. And it automatically gives me, oh, okay. Oh, this, is what you, this is what you want okay. is style sheet. And my son is going to be in the background a little bit. Oh, so for, please forgive him for talking and gaming while I'm trying to create a video. It's fine. And then in... <laughs> And instead of master.css, I'm going to do Pacific. <laughs> I'm not mad. Pacific.css. And all right, let's just say, let's just tell myself, remind myself that that's what I'm doing. Um, and this is linking to me style sheet. Okay, so there it is. Let's go ahead and control shift H. As long as you have the preview package, then you'll be able to see what it looks like. Oh, look at that. It's pretty. We finally put some CSS in there. So it's not just black and white. Now we got some blue and, you know, some style to it. Um, and that's it. So far, all we've done is background color and the color of text. So yeah. let's keep going. Make sure there's nothing else we have to do. Let's okay. see. Oh, okay, in B, it tells us that we have to find a company name in the first paragraph below H2. And then, okay, so we have two places, wherever the company name is, basically. On this, it wants us to do a span tag. Uh, not this one. Let's see, after H2. Do, 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 do. Oh, I forgot to say. Um, uh, let's see. And header area. Even though I didn't put the actual navigation in the header, typically I would actually have it within the header element itself. However, I didn't. It's in the navigation element. Normally, I will put the navigation within the header. Just personally, it's a style. You know, it's up to you. Um, but that's so to me. That's still the header area. And what I mean by that is it's going to be, it's um, going to be uh, a part of every HTML page, right? Okay, great. So now I can move on to the main two. And, oh, here it is, Pacific Trail. And um, what I want to do to this title, um, I am going to make it so that it is attached to the resort class, right? Which changes the text color. So the expected result is that I'm going to change this. See these two places where Pacific Trails Resort is? Uh, that's B and C in page 139 of Pacific Trails. So it, I can't like, you know, if I was in a word presser, I would highlight and then I would go to the uh, text editor toolbar. But instead, since I'm uh, coding manually, actually I actually have to do a span. Remember, a span is like a span of time. 
it's a uh, yeah so it's it's some sort of um, unit you know that spans across um, this title to change it um, but I can't just say span that doesn't do anything you can look over here it does nothing so I have to give it um, the name so I am using a class so I'll just type in class I can tab right when I find it and the class name all of that tells me that's amazing uh, it actually gave me resort in the list of um, in the list of things that I could pull from my style sheet I have a little s in front of it look at this I gonna show you again that was really cool so if I start typing resort notice here it has this s um, so that means that it's linked to that style sheet because I linked it now Adam knows oh, okay you got stuff over there it's very sophisticated programming that I love all right so moving on now oh take a look over here all right so now it's got this lovely blue color and I'm going to do the same thing I'm just gonna copy this span tag now reminding myself that the tag the element I have to open and close but let's go find the other place for it and paste that and then oh see because I just pasted it without closing it it made the whole address so that's a good indicator and that's another reason why we want to have uh, why this, this atom is great because if we have that live preview we can tell you know if we're making mistakes or if something's wrong with our CSS all right so we did have this divider and in D it tells us that we need to assign the div that contains the address and phone information to an ID named contact okay so we don't have this in our CSS yet but we can go ahead and give it the ID and look at that Adam already knows oh hey you want something here you want a tag this is a good at or a attribute this is a good attribute ID equals contact All right, save that page notice it doesn't do anything to it because we haven't added CSS at all all right I'm looking at my page and it looks like everything's good so I can move on to uh, page 140 and it tells me that I got to do stuff to the yurts page oh yeah so I don't have the yurts page attached yet close our preview here and let's open up our preview for the yurts page and then let's go ahead and I'm gonna take from the index and let's see I'm gonna find up here find my style sheet copy this and paste it into my yurts and right when I do that it should automatically give me all that styling that we have boom it does lovely and even in in this one we have the description tag and that's cool so now um, that's actually changed to that nice dark blue color check one thing I know I messed up on the D tags okay so something I messed up on in previous chapter and I apologize was um I got to put the DL tag in here it's called the description list it's the actual description list I don't need a class um, but I do need to have my whole list of descriptions within that element so let me add that down to the bottom close up my element and I just wanted to do this in case you had been following along with a previous and you didn't do this so my bad sorry about that any list you're gonna have to contain the list within an element so it's kind of elements within elements all right so task five says update the CSS now you may notice an empty space between the header area and the navigation area yes I do that is a default bottom margin of the h1 element gotcha and okay so go to 4.5 and recall that a technique to cause the browser to collapse this empty space is to configure the margin so to set the bottom margin of the h1 element to zero 
All right, so let's check that out in our CSS. Save this page, go to pacific.css, and it's telling us that in the H1 element, uh, right? Yeah, I don't have that. So in the H1 element itself has a margin. And because we only chose the background color to be the header, and the header is a container of the H1, the header is going to match the size specifically of the H1 element. We could change the header size. This is another uh, option. And, but it tells us that it just wants us to collapse it. So really it's just taking away the margin because in the browser, H1 tags have some white space and that's just a part of the styling of the H1 tag. Let's give us an H1 tag open up our brackets and add margin bottom find that property equals the two values no i don't want that value i want zero there we go and then i save this and boom. okay so great so now it's got no space it looks better but definitely in the future i hope we add some padding to it all right and then so now we have that and Save the Pacific CSS, launch the browser, we've done that. Click the navigation, should also do, okay, so we have in the home, same thing. Perfect, wonderful. We're good to go, make sure everything's saved. Okay, great. All right, well that concludes chapter four of Pacific Trails. Um, I hope you feel confident and ready for completing Path of Light Yoga Studio case study in page 140 to 142 on your own. Best of luck, designers.